Hello everyone, welcome back. My Elgato prompter has decided to go the way of the dodo bird, so while I'm dealing with customer service with them, I'm just going to be raw dogging today's episode. Today's episode is really special because I have my 2011 MacBook Pro. This is a 15 inch i7, 2.2 gigahertz, 16 gigs of 1333 megahertz OWC RAM, and now with a one terabyte OWC, three gigabytes per second SSD. Now, it didn't start out life that way. I got it from a reputable eBay seller who had an SSHD in it. Now, if you don't know what an SSHD is, it's basically enough storage in flash memory to have a small OS so that you can have your boot OS so that it boots up quickly and then the rest of your storage is still a spinning hard disk. Now, back in 2011, that would have been a really acceptable way to go about storing things. I mean, I didn't have an SSD until about 2016, I think was the first time with my 2012 Mac Pro it was the first time that I had a computer that could boot SSD. But that's all well and good, but it's 2025 now, freshly 2025. Happy New Year, everybody. And because of that, I need a computer with flash storage. And so that's why I went that route. You don't have to spend more than the computer to get these upgrades. I most certainly did. And in total with these upgrades and the computer, I am in about $240. Now I would be wrong to not tell you all about the graphics card failure issues that is prevalent in all 2011 15 inch and 17 inch MacBook Pro models. I've been able to take action by purchasing this Nulaxi aluminum recycled stand that the computer is sitting on and I'm running max fan control as well as the seller who sold it to me claimed to have repasted it and I did verify that it was repasted and the thermals are remaining really steady. I've ran it through Final Cut Pro. I've ran about two 30 minute 1080p timelines. You gotta bear in mind, this is 2011, so you're not gonna be throwing 4K at this. It wasn't until 2013 that Macs were starting to be able to handle 4K high bitrate footage. And even then, a lot of them were throwing up in their own mouths unless they were a high spec up Mac Pro trash can of the day. So another really interesting part about this specific model is that it was built to order with the high gloss, high res display. So what is high res? High res is below retina, but it was what you could pay for build to order, kind of like what now today Apple's doing with the nano texture display. And you had options. You could either get the high resolution glossy or the high resolution matte. When you got the high resolution matte, it changed the bezel it was, I believe, slightly thinner, and it was a matte display. So it was a lot better if you were working as a traveling um, business person, film director, whatever, and you wanted to use this in all different types of lighting situations. But this one, oddly enough, was billed to order with the glossy one. And when I went in, the seller had completely uh, changed out the hard drives, but when you get into the system preferences and you go under Wi-Fi networks, you can find Wi-Fi networks that this has connected to in the past. And I discovered, interestingly enough, this computer is a veteran. This computer, I'm not sure which theater it was in, but when I was in theater, it had pucks. These were like things that you could buy from the local bazaar that you would put a local SIM card into and pay either by minutes, or in my case, I was in theater a lot later in Afghanistan and Kuwait, and we were paying for the gigabyte of data monthly. And that is really interesting because this survived uh, a conflict. It survived going overseas. Um, and it really is not that, damaged. I mean, 
It's gonna have some scuffs. These unibodies were workhorses for a very long time and a lot of them ended up getting thrown to kids and kids are not known to be very gentle with electronics, but this is quite a survivor. And I'm really proud to have this as my primary laptop right now. And I'm really excited to make some more videos about it and show you guys some more excellent uh, Firewire stuff with this because that is one of the main reasons I bought this is the built-in Firewire right there, Firewire 800. And I've got an XL1S in the mail right now. And so when that gets here, I'm gonna be making videos about importing Firewire, how to use older versions of Final Cut Pro, PowerPC, whole bunch of stuff. Anywho, that's all for now. I hope you all have a happy new year. God bless, and I'll catch you around.